Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Eileen and you are watching Jane Nicole Designs. This is the place where I share my crafting journey from making old things new to new things old. If you'd like, go ahead and subscribe down there at the bottom there. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I have an Etsy store, Jane Nicole Designs. So come along with me. Today we are going to be doing a chicken wire frame, picture frame, earring holder. So I just got this frame at the Goodwill thrift store and I took uh, some fabric. I have chicken wire, um, some of these little cotton pieces and a little bit of fabric right there. And I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to do this. So we'll put our project right there and that's where we're going. What you're going to be needing is I have a big roll of chicken wire and I cut a piece that's a little bit larger than the frame. So you'll see that I recommend that when you cut the chicken wire, you put it um, right where these little twisties are. It's just easier to bend and things like that. So um, do it a little bit bigger than your frame. Uh, this is the frame that I'm going to use. I have two identical matching ones. I'm going to give them as gifts. So these are just open frames. There's no glass. There wasn't anything. I just got them like this. So I think I got it for 99 cents. So check out your uh, thrift stores to see if that is um, something that you can pick up. So let me get my glasses on so I can see the fine details. Uh, when you're coming in, go ahead and just say hello and hit that subscribe button below and get the little, um, the little, uh, uh, bell that just lets you know when I'm on and when I put posted some things, but welcome. All right, so I have the frame and the chicken wire. I wanted to show you I have a piece of chipboard, and this chipboard I did add a like about an inch to it, um, and this is this just nicely fits in the frame there. There's a little bit on each side. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do to um, fill in those gaps. And then I have um, a piece of felt right here. This is about a nine by 12 um, inch. I just went to Joann's and got a piece of, of felt. And then I just have a couple pieces of just old fabric that I got at um, the thrift store I bought a batch that had a bunch of quilting material in it and um, I have two pieces of that which if you look at it you see that raw edge um, I just took it and ripped it so um, you don't have to use scissors on there so um, you can if you want to but I just made it really rustic looking so um, and then for embellishments, I have some cotton. And then I did get a little piece of scrap fabric here. You see how I've ripped it? Um, we're gonna be using that with the little uh, pieces of cotton. So that's what I'm using. And then to put it all together, I have my Gorilla glue gun. Um, I'll be using these, these are just pliers um, that I, these are um, little snippet pliers that I got out of my husband's toolbox. And then um, if you need to, you can, I have a pair of scissors here on hand. So let's get started. First thing that I'm going to do is I want to be able to um, put this frame upside down and get a good idea of where and how much um, fabric I need to cover up the back of this frame. So I'm gonna put this one on top here uh, and then I'm gonna put the piece of, of uh, flannel here. And then I'm just gonna fold it in on this, each of the corners here. I just wanna make sure that I have a little bit of room on the outside. So how I'm gonna do this, I hope you can see, just make sure, give me a thumbs up. I'm gonna take my glue gun, put a little bit of glue on the corner, fold it almost to the edge there, make sure that it is straight, and then fold that in just like that. I'm gonna do that to all four. I'll just put a little bit of glue here. I don't want too much there because I don't want it to pucker or um, make any wrinkles. 
So I'm just gonna make sure that it is square. Move it a little bit. And I'm gonna do that to all four corners. So that when I put the backing on here, it will be square. My glue gun is on low, so if you want to do it on high, I would recommend that you use the little finger guards. And then all I'm going to do is just fold each side in there. I'm going to put a little glue on each of the ends and then just right along the top. You don't have to do it tight, just give it a little bit of room. Now, once that I have that all glued down, I'm gonna do the same thing to the piece of chipboard that I uh, put the extra little piece on. And I'm just gonna fold that the same way. I'm just gonna lay it down, center it in that piece. Fold down each of the corners. and then glue each of the sides. Okay, now that I have all of the four sides down, this is gonna be the front, and I'm going to just like that on the back. Just like that. Okay, now I'm ready to put the chicken wire on my frame, and I'm gonna fold, say just, upside down decide which way you want it if you want to hang it this way or you want it, it it doesn't matter either way is good so when i put this piece of chicken wire on i'm going to just put it top right to the bottom of my frame and then these little pieces right here i'm going to use a little um pliers and i'm just going to push them to the side making sure that it goes down in, goes down in my picture frame. Be careful when you do this. I have my sweatshirt on for a reason. I don't want to cut or snag my skin on this because these pieces are very sharp. So I'm just gonna make sure that they are sticking up so that I can fold them over on my project and cover them up with that second piece of, of fabric covered with the chipboard. All right, so right about there is my, my stopping point. So I'm gonna take my uh, cutters here and I'm gonna trim off the excess.
Okay, now that I'm done, I'll just leave that. Maybe I'll do it, use that for another project. But I want to pull up these corners here. And I'm gonna make sure that these edges, let's make sure I put the right ones up, just like that. I want them to be able to stick up a little bit from the project. If you have a better way how to do this and decide where you want, let me know in the comments. I would love to get your suggestions. I'm going to do that to this side as well. Just about a, a 90 degree angle so that they stick up straight. If you wanted to, you could use some uh, like a staple gun, um, but I don't have one. So this is my rendition of fastening this on. Okay, so there we go. Do you see how I have that tucked up under each of these? I'm gonna push this down to the bottom of it. Make sure that all my pieces are in the right spots. I am gonna move a little bit. There's a couple of them I wanna move. But there we go, now it is ready. This is the piece that I'm gonna put in there. It's the one that has the, the um, belt on the back there. And I'm gonna push that down. And do you see how it pokes out of the sides there? I want that to happen. Okay, now I'm gonna take each of these and just turn them over and make sure that it sticks right on the back of my uh, piece of fabric. Now that I've got the canvas and the piece of fabric here stretched out with the chicken wire, I'm gonna glue this side down and then I'm gonna stretch it and then glue it to the other side so it goes flat. So you can be generous on your glue I'm gonna press it down for a while and make sure that it stays. Because I'm gonna be pulling on this side because it is a little bit shorter. Let's make sure that the, the adhesive stays on there and that it does a really good job. Now that I've let this cool and it is stuck on there, I wanna go, go ahead and just adhere this right to the board. Make sure that you do have a lot of glue on there because you don't want it to fall apart. Grab some more glue here. We just wouldn't want our project to fall apart. Like I said, make sure that you have this down so that it will not move. And that just covers up the sides there. It doesn't have to be perfect because we won't see that part. So the last thing that you can do is either you can tuck these under or you can trim them off if you would like. I'm actually just gonna fold them in. I'll show you in just a moment. Just gonna fold them in so that they um, stay right by the frame. Just like that. It's gonna hold that fabric where it needs to be. There we go. This is okay that it's not all the way 
because it won't be seen in the frame. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we gotta make sure that it stays in the frame. So I'm just going to put, we're gonna do a little bit of squishing and scrunching just to make sure that it stays in the frame. And I'm just pushing those little pieces of the wire in there. I wanna make sure that it stays just like that. So once you get it all the way pushed down, then you can kind of start moving things around. And I want this to be flat. You can even take a hammer and just make sure that it is in the spot where you want it to be. Once I've got all of the the pieces pushed in where I want them to be. I left um, a little bit of a lineup here, which is perfect. I tucked the little pieces of the uh, chicken wire in there and made sure that they were safe so that they wouldn't get, um, you know, poke anybody. So the reason why I did that is because I'm gonna get a little piece here as I pull this out there was that little piece right here that I am going to glue on the bottom of my frame so that um, it will stay in here. So go ahead and just take a bead of glue. You don't wanna to put too much on there cause you don't want it to squish out, but I just wanna form that in there. push it back in and I want to push it as far down to that seam as I can. Go ahead and push on the fabric to make sure that stays in there. There's a little bit of the glue that came out, but that's what you want to do. You just want to push it down in there so that it stays. And that is gonna be the bottom of your frame. I'm gonna do it the long way here. I'm not gonna do it upside there. I'm gonna do it the long way. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is we're gonna just pop in the sides here. And I'm not gonna do it all the way down because um, I don't want the glue to come come out through, through the, the frame here. So I'm gonna flip it over and just put a few of those beads just, just to make sure that it stays right on that little top there. It's more important that you get the top and the bottom. Once I've got all of the sides pushed in as much as I want, made sure that they are all secure, that they won't fall apart, this is what it looks like. So. This one here, I can pull this chicken wire out a little bit because when you do hang necklaces and, and different um, earrings, you wanna be able to put the hooks down the, um, the little piece, uh, holes in here. So you wanna make sure that you have a little bit of room in between the fabric and your chicken wire. So the last thing we're gonna do is we wanna embellish this. We just wanna give it a little bit of extra character. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'll show you this here is some cotton and some fabric. So I just took a piece of fabric just like this. This has um, got a little bit of texture in it and it's about a four inch strip. So I'm just gonna take my scissors a little snip on the corner there and then I'm just gonna rip this because I like I said I am not don't sew very much and so that's my uh, that's my rendition of cutting straight lines and things like that so I'm gonna fold it in half so it has a or corner to corner so it looks like a triangle and I'm just gonna put two little pleats in there just so that it gives it a little bit of texture. In those pleats there I will put some glue 
almost like folding a little napkin. Just like that. And you can move it around, mold it to whatever you want. But this is kind of, this is my rendition of just a little, almost like a little backdrop. So I'm going to put that just like that in the corner. So I'll put some glue on there. Be generous because you don't want this to fall apart. And then I'm going to take three, three little cotton fluffs. And I'm just going to put them in a, I'm going to put two down at the bottom. Like that. Be generous with your glue. You want to make sure that it does not fall apart. I'm going to actually glue these two cotton pieces together. And then I'm going to take a smaller one here. And I'm going to put that just up at the top. I'm going to nestle it as a bud. It's always good to put things in threes. It's more pleasing to the eye. So the next thing I want to do is I this right here, although it is okay, I want a little bit of that fabric just to make it a just finished product. So I will take my piece of fabric again. I'm going to just do a, a piece about two inches by four inches wide. Take a little snip, rip it, and we're going to fray the ends a little bit and then I'm going to do the, the same thing but I'm not going to fold it. I'm just going to do two little pleats there just to make it look you want that point to sit up but I just want to make it just kind of like a little addition down at the bottom there. So just like that. And then I'm going to nestle it right underneath. Give yourself glue on the bottom and then put a little bit on the top. Squish that in there. And there is the little embellishment for the bottom there. Like I said, you could do this and hang it this way or you could do it down at the bottom. So now once we've got all of our pieces together, it wouldn't be a Jane Nicole Designs project unless I either sparkled it or distressed it. So today I'm gonna distress this project. This is metallic luster and it is chrome and it's like a paste. You can use it like a paint. Um, if you don't wanna use rub and buff, this is a great alternative because it doesn't smell. So I'm just going to do, because this is silver and this is gold and rustic-y, I'm going to give it a little bit of a silver vibe. And this is how you use the, the um, metallic luster. Just like that. And I'm going to make it a little distressed here. There's some, some discoloring on the side here. I'm going to cover that up with the luster. You could put a lot or a little on. If this is too much for you, you can take a baby wipe and you, before it dries, you can take some of that off. But I'm just gonna distress it, make it a little bit old and have it match just like that. You do wanna let this dry completely before you seal it. You can seal it with Mod Podge or you could seal it with any type of varnish or wax. So just like that, just like somebody would come along and dry brush it or something like that. And then for the flowers, since they are so gold and sparkly, I'm just going to rub a little bit on the top. 
and that will give it a little bit of a chrome gold texture. And like I said, you can use a little or a lot. It's up to you. I just don't want the gold too sparkly. I want the gold to be muted because I have the chicken wire on there. So that's, that's just my rendition of it. And this stuff is super easy and quick. It dries very quick. So you can decide what you wanna do, just like that. It comes in many different colors. Here's a copper, there's white, there's even gold here. And this is my favorite, I'll open it up for you. This is rose gold. So metallic luster, check it out. All right, once you're done with that and you have finished all your, uh, all your distressing or sparkling, whatever you wanna do, it is time to use your, your thing. You could set it up just like this. You could put a, um, a hanger on it. You could put a either some type of a bow or anything like that. I'm actually just gonna be leaning this up against the wall where I have it. So um, I don't need to put any type of a hanger on it. So how you do this, Here's my earrings. Just take the earrings wherever you would like them to be. That's one thing about this. It will be able to hold your dangly earrings of all different shapes and sizes. And if you don't have anything that has a, a clip or anything on it, just like this right here, you can actually just take a little clothespin and hang it on there just like that. So. Let me know if you want to do this. If you have any questions, go ahead, put it in the comments. You're welcome to watch this video over and over and do it yourself. Contact me if you um, have any questions or send me a picture and let me know what you've done. But again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Eileen and you are watching Jane Nicole Designs. Remember to take that little button down at the bottom, hit subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Okay, now that I have all of the four sides down, this is gonna be the front, and I'm going to, just like that, on the back. Just like that. Okay, now I'm ready to put the chicken wire on my frame, and I'm gonna fold, I'd say just, upside down decide which way you want it if you want to hang it this way or you want it, it it doesn't matter either way is good so when i put this piece of chicken wire on i'm gonna just put it top right to the bottom of my frame and then these little pieces right here i'm going to use a little um pliers and i'm just going to push them to the side making sure that it goes down in, goes down in my picture frame. Be careful when you do this. I have my sweatshirt on for a reason. I don't want to cut or snag my skin on this because these pieces are very sharp. So I'm just gonna make sure that they are sticking up so that I can fold them over on my project and cover them up with that second piece of, of fabric covered with the chipboard. All right, so right about there is my, my stopping point. So I'm gonna take my uh, cutters here and I'm gonna trim off the excess. Howdy, today we are going to be doing a chicken wire frame, picture frame, earring holder. So I just got this frame at the Goodwill thrift store and I took uh, some fabric. I have chicken wire, um, some of these little cotton pieces and a little bit of fabric right there. And I'm gonna show you a quick tutorial on how to do this. So we'll put our project right there and that's where we're going. 
what you're going to be needing is I have a big roll of chicken wire and I cut a piece that's a little bit larger than the frame. So you'll see that I recommend that when you cut the chicken wire, you put it um, right where these little twisties are. It's just easier to bend and things like that. So um, do it a little bit bigger than your frame. Uh, this is the frame that I'm going to use. I have two identical matching ones. I'm going to give them as gifts. So these are just open frames. There's no glass. There wasn't anything. I just got them like this. So I think I got it for 99 cents. So check out your uh, thrift stores to see if that is um, something that you can pick up. So let me get my glasses on so I can see the fine details. Uh, when you're coming in, go ahead and just say hello and hit that subscribe button below and get the little, um, the little, uh, uh, bell that just lets you know when I'm on and when I put posted some things, but welcome. All right, so I have the frame and the chicken wire. I wanted to show you I have a piece of chipboard, and this chipboard I did add a like about an inch to it, um, and this is this just nicely fits in the frame there. There's a little bit on each side. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do to um, fill in those gaps. And then I have um, a piece of felt right here. This is about a nine by 12 um, inch. I just went to Joann's and got a piece of, of felt. And then I just have a couple pieces of just old fabric that I got at um, the thrift store. I bought a batch that had a bunch of quilting material in it. And um, I have two pieces of that, which if you look at it, you see that raw edge. Um, I just took it and ripped it. So um, you don't have to use scissors on there. So um, you can if you want to, but I just made it really rustic looking. So, um, and then for embellishments, I have some cotton. And then I did get a little piece of scrap fabric here. You see how I ripped it? Um, we're going to be using that with the little uh, pieces of cotton. So that's what I'm using. And then to put it all together, I have my Gorilla glue gun. Um, I'll be using these. These are just pliers um, that I, these are um, little snippet pliers that I got out of my husband's toolbox. And then um, if you need to, you can, I have a pair of scissors here on hand. So let's get started. First thing that I'm going to do is I want to be able to um, put this frame upside down and get a good idea of where and how much um, fabric I need to cover up the back of this frame. So I'm gonna put this one on top here uh, and then I'm gonna put the piece of, of uh, flannel here. And then I'm just gonna fold it in on this, each of the corners here. I just wanna make sure that I have a little bit of room on the outside. So how I'm gonna do this, I hope you can see, just make sure, give me a thumbs up. I'm gonna take my glue gun, put a little bit of glue on the corner, fold it almost to the edge there, make sure that it is straight, and then fold that in just like that. I'm gonna do that to all four. I'll just put a little bit of glue here. I don't want too much there because I don't want it to pucker or um, make any wrinkles. So I'm just gonna make sure that it is square. Move it a little bit. And I'm gonna do that to all four corners. So that when I put the backing on here, it will be square. My glue gun is on low, so if you want to do it on high, I would recommend that you use the little finger guards. And then all I'm going to do is just fold each side in there. I'm going to put a little glue on each of the ends and then just right along the top. You don't have to do it tight, just give it a little bit of room. 
and fold down each side. 